But first to another racism funeral in the US that turned out to be not so much a hoax, but something just as sinister. A modern day witch hunt that saw innocent lives ruined with false claims of racism. In mid-2018, a young, privileged student at an elite progressive women's college in Northampton that costs upwards of 80000 a year claimed that she was a victim of racism. Umo Kanute claimed she was harassed by a cafeteria worker, college janitor and security officer for simply eating while black. Despite the videos she posted of the incident showing the workers being awfully polite and non-confrontational. Canute nevertheless claimed she was deeply traumatised because she was accused of trespassing. This young lady calls the entire situation outrageous and she's sharing her story so that no other woman of colour goes through what she went through. I'm so, so upset. This is Umu Kanute. She's a sophomore at the college, working as a teacher's assistant and residential advisor over the summer. She was confronted by campus police officers. I see the cop walk in with a Smith employee whom I've never seen before. And um, the man asked me, uh, we were wondering why you're here. Kanute, still emotional over it all, says she was very nervous and overwhelmed after the incident. It just still upsets me to just talk about it because I don't I don't even feel safe. The story of racism at Smith College went viral. There were headlines in the New York Times and Washington Post and outlets across America and all uncritically accepted Canute's claims that she was a victim of racism. They validated her unfounded claims that she had suffered from a pattern of discrimination and felt her life was in danger. Smith College President Kathleen McCartney not only called Canute to apologise, but she placed the working class people, including the elderly janitor, on leave and issued this statement. This painful incident reminds us of the ongoing legacy of racism and bias in which people of colour are targeted while simply going about the business of their ordinary lives. She also launched an investigation into the incident. That thorough investigation found that not only was there no racism, but Canute was indeed trespassing and had accessed an area close to college students for the summer. Only young children attending a summer camp were allowed to use the building's cafeteria. The 35-page report concluded that the janitor, security officer, cafeteria workers had done nothing wrong or in any way motivated by race. So the investigation found no evidence of racism or patterns of discrimination, but nobody cared anymore. The media and race hustlers got the thrill of another systematic racism story and the privileged young woman who went from an elite boarding school to an elite leftist college got to play the downtrodden victim. Sure, the lives of the uh, working class plebs was ruined, but hey, these are people whose annual salaries are less than the cost of tuition at Smith College. To the elites, they simply don't matter. The innocent workers who were branded racist and subjected to terrible abuse and even threats never got apologies, despite the report's findings being released more than two years ago. Two of them had worked at the college for more than 30 years. But none of that mattered when they were falsely accused of racism. The only reason that we know this whole eating while black catastrophe is fake news is because a reporter called Michael Power revisited the story this week and asked about that investigation's findings. So not only were those poor workers not apologised, uh, get no apologies from the, uh, the college president, but she still claims that race played a part, saying... <laughs> It's impossible to rule out the potential role of implicit racial bias. So the staff at Smith College are still, to this day, having to undergo anti-bias training where they are taught to examine their white privilege, even if they're a cafeteria worker on minimum wage.